very good evening to you. I hope you've been having a lovely day today. It's the 11th day of April. He was the Imenda Rakasana, but we are still here. This is the Power Talk Show, and I am your host, Cheryl Blessing. Now, we've been having so many conversations centered around forgiveness and the seasons of Easter and Ramadan. But now that it's done, we want to figure out how we can make money, particularly on the digital spaces. Because since COVID happened, People are moving their businesses online. So we want to know how we can tap into the growing e-commerce economy and how we can really monetize our skills and the platforms that we have already on these digital platforms. And joining me live here on set are two experts who have been on social media since the inception of it. And they're more familiar with how you can harness these opportunities that are present online. So we have Victor Muridi, who is an interior graphics and web designer, all in one. Like, I like the many titles. Karibu sana, Victor. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's so lovely to have you here. And right next to Victor, we have Sabrina Abigail, who is a journalist. She's a media personality. And you're also on social media. Karibu. Thank you so much. I hope you guys are having a lovely day. Yes. Yeah. Thank God, because now we'll end it on a beautiful note. And I want us to really understand how we can tap into these opportunities that are present on the e-commerce spaces. Because e-commerce has really grown, particularly in the last few years. So many businesses, so many people are moving online. And in this day and time when we keep wondering how can we make extra money, how can we get jobs when there are literally no jobs around, we can create these opportunities for ourselves on the digital platforms. So I want to hear from you as well. I want to know, do you do a business online? Have you ever done a business online? Or are you even considering doing it? Let us know what your experience is. You can go on our social media platforms at Y254. That's on X on Facebook, and on Instagram. Let us know your thoughts, and we will sample that as we progress with this conversation. So I think, maybe I said e-commerce, and I may have missed some people there. So let's define what e-commerce is. Victor, could you give us a brief description of what you'd term as e-commerce? OK, when I think of e-commerce, eh, I will think of the businesses online. Uh, you can have a physical businesses, but the transactions are online. Eh? So you find that you're only doing delivery. Yes, so it's only, it's, I will say it's selling online. Mm. Yes. So selling, particularly online. Yeah. I like what you've said. You can have a physical shop, but then your transactions and maybe orders and everything else, yeah. all of that is happening online, yeah. which adds value. Because so many people would assume it's purely online and you do not have a physical shop or it's just a website they access. And Sabrina, what has been your experience with e-commerce as a lady, like as a lady, if you're looking for something, an outfit, shoes, what's your experience doing e-commerce and accessing these pages? Oh, uh, for me, e-commerce. Uh, I'd say, as ladies, we really like buying things online and all that. So for me, I like shopping online. So if I get to see an outfit or maybe a wig, so I'm able to just purchase it online without going to the physical shop because sometimes these shops are so far away. So I guess e-commerce is very important because at least, you know, they can do delivery, you know, worldwide and all that. Yeah. yeah. And I think what you've said is why most people prefer online shopping because it's so convenient you're the comfort of your house and you're just selecting what you want <laughs> because going to a physical shop sometimes people think about coming to town or going to do where to get one particular item it's so hectic it's very tedious so it's easier for them to deliver to your doorstep and victor you've been working online you've done various things online and i wonder how did you get into that did you when you initially started business was that your goal did you start a physical shop or did you decide to do it digitally as well uh, how i started uh, okay i had a skill at first uh, and then i was thinking on how to get uh, the jobs now so i went online i looked for places where i can work from the comfort of my home yeah. and uh, that is how i started yeah, because normally, yeah, uh, uh, the best thing about uh, this working online is that uh, 
from where you are. It doesn't matter if you have an office. It doesn't matter if you're in the house, if you're in your bedroom. So as long as you have a way to, to, to link to your customer, to connect to your customer, and you sort their needs, uh, that is how you can do it. Yeah. Uh, because you don't need to have, you know, so many people are hindered from starting businesses mm -hmm. because of the resources. Yeah. You need to have capital, you need to have CG investors, you yeah. need to have a location, and all these things really cost money. Yes. And so many people are avoiding all those costs by starting online. Because if you have a phone, if you have access to the internet, then it's easy for you to even set up a shop. Yeah. Some people even do it without having the products which I want us to get into later as we progress. But the first thing you said is you had the skills. So skills ni muhimu. Sana. So siyezi ingia tu hivi ni anze kuuza vitu, ama usasa unamanishaje. Okay, even in selling, eh? for instance, uh, this is a competitive market. Eh? For instance, you're, you're selling shoes. Mm -hmm. So there are a variety of shoes. You need to decide which shoes go faster, which shoes the market prefers. Before you go, you go advertise this, the shoe I'm selling. You need to, at the back of your mind, you need to know, if I put this product online, it will have demand. Okay? So, where's the letter? Via to the Zamani, Sana, via to the Mezeka, and then you sell them online. <laughs> no one will buy. Yeah. yeah. But if you get maybe the latest trend, if it's clothes, you get the latest fashion, you put them online, of course you'll get customers. Because mm. the market is always, it's, 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 it's always growing. Yeah. And people are, then are looking for the next big thing. Yeah. Yeah. I like that because I know that the genuinely people wake up and they assume they can sell anything online. But if you do not even do your research on what your target audience is, what you want to sell, what they like, yeah. then utapata you have dead stock where yes. you just bought things and they stay there with you and you can't sell them or move them. So, as you said, the market is growing. Yeah. People are still accessing these online platforms. Yeah. There's a concern that there are not enough people, ama to me oversaturate, particularly in the media industry, Sabrina. So many people talk about journalists and people in media personalities when I say my market equals so saturated. So many people are walking around with their papers, their degrees, PhDs, but they have nowhere to go. What do you think about that, especially with focus on how we can utilize the digital space. Do you think the market is saturated or do you think there's still space and room for other people to get in? Uh, what I would say, the market is not saturated because that's where we have the online market. So it's not a must for you to go to those media houses or go to work somewhere. You can just have maybe begin your podcasts. That is a way that you can practice your journalism instead of just sitting at home with your certificates without doing anything so you can start this podcast and in fact podcasts are doing really well and they are paying yeah. they are really paying uh, instead of just uh, you know don't not making advantage of what you have yeah yeah and that's really important because anyway sometimes people sit down and wait for jobs when i say menyo akuna jobs you know, and you say you have the skills, you have the education, you have technology. You can do something, but people want to sit and relax and be told, here is the company, this is the job, come in at 8 and leave at 5 p.m. Do you think that's going to change in the next few years? Victor, do you think we're going to have traditional work in the next 5 to 10 years? Okay, I think... Uh Yes, uh, there, there, there are careers you cannot avoid. Eh? For instance, you cannot be an engineer online. So, but for most of these jobs, you can work from where you are. Uh, a lot of that is changing. We, we saw from the time COVID came, COVID uh, was an eye-opener. So after COVID, that is when people realized, maybe I have a day job, but I need something extra. I need extra savings, I need what. So they, they, they just decided to, to start something online. You will find that people are selling nyanya online. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> when you meet them, they yeah, are I've managers. Yeah. yeah. They are managers in their in their companies, mm. but they are selling o, o nyanya. This nyanya came because <laughs> now the management was not needed, so mm. they got they have a kaland somewhere. They started making nyanya, and then they realized I can make <laughs> money with <laughs> this. <laughs> so you see, so I think uh, I think the industry is really changing. Yeah. And the job market, most of it is going online. We have even companies hiring people 
and they are not paying uh, office space for them. Mm. So it's getting cheaper for them if you can work from wherever you are. Yeah. Yeah. So it's even so cheaper it for them and it's safer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It might change for some industries. Yeah. Yes. Sabrina, do you agree with that as well? I do agree. Mm -hmm. uh, because I think as time goes by, uh, this digitalization is really important. Uh, and uh, even things like, uh, you know, treating people, hospitals, yeah. there is a time that will come and, you know, you can literally, you can, you know, uh, have a one-on-one -one, uh, conversation or a progress with your doctor. They'll yeah. be able to, you know, just check on your progress when you are at the comfort of your home. So I guess, as, as Victor has said, there are careers, of course, you can't avoid, but mostly, I'm um, I tend to believe we are going to move on the digital side. Yeah. And you see, as you said that, I know of some court cases that happen purely online. They do not have time to come to court and do this. So imagine join a Zoom meeting. And, you know, at this time, that's when you start. So when you think about the judiciary system, something that's so serious, moving towards the online space, then so many industries are also most likely going to move into the same space. And why is it that during COVID, that's when people realized we can work from home? Because before that, we had these digital spaces. E-commerce was still alive and well. But I feel like since 2020, that's when people decided or realize that we can do these things from home without having to come to the office every day and even make sales. Sabrina, why do you think that is the case? For me, I think people never expected such a thing like COVID would ever happen. So the fact that it happened and everyone was forced to stay at their homes and work, you know, there, I'm sure there are even people who learned how to use Zoom during that time. Yeah. Trust me. Because they are used to office work, eight to five, you're there in the office. But because this COVID came, the government made people, you know, stay in their homes and work has to be done. Yeah. You know? So that is, I guess that is why now people realize they now have to u utilize these dig digital platforms and all that. Mm. So I guess COVID was good. I guess it was good. Yeah. It, yeah so there the was some benefit to it yes. because it made people realize we have to change our yeah. perspective. Because the world was so fixated for so long on a particular way. And maybe it had to happen for people to realize we can change. As you also said, mm -hmm. for, there are people who are comfortable with their one job. Yeah. But then the minute you lose your job, you realize I have a farm, by the way, we shall go. <laughs> At some point, I even saw people, as you said, people selling nyanya and everything. I saw some grocery shops telling you they'll deliver to your doorstep wow. using that. Mm -hmm. If it's nyama, they will deliver. Right now, you see, we have even food, drinks, everything brought to our doorstep because of the digital space. Now I wonder, how can we really harness this? Because particularly you, Victor, you do so many things online. Could you just touch on some of the things that you do and how you're able to really tap into the clients using your, your social media platforms or the online presence that you have? Okay, uh, for me, now, uh, okay, first of all, like I said, you'll need a skill. Eh? Uh, so with my skill now, I can go online eh, and advertise this, the service that I offer. And uh, maybe a client will want proof of what I do. Uh, they, they, they might tell me, send me the jobs you've done, send me this, send me this. I can through online, I've not met the client, I'm able to send that. So the client can see what I've done, they can see if uh, I'm, 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 I'm up to the task, and then that's when you get jobs. And again, there's this other, sometimes you work for people who are not even here. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So. The same thing, they'll, 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 they'll want to see your portfolio. They'll want to see what you've done, what you've delivered, what you've accomplished. And then after that, they can hire you through their online platforms where you can go sign in, put your credentials, create a portfolio, and then someone else from somewhere, they'll hire you because of your work. Yeah. Yeah, they'll hire you because of your work, not, not knowing you, not not ever meeting you. Yeah. Yes, so you but get jobs. But because they see uh, your job. Yeah. And do you think that also has helped? Because, you know, in the past you could see, you could know a plumber. Yeah. The whole plot, the whole estate has been using this one plumber. Yeah. So because of the referral, yeah. and everyone knows him, they'll use him. Yeah. But then you've never seen his work. Yeah. So you're not sure if yeah. he's actually good at it, 
or not. Yeah. In those cases, you'd find some people are not as good as they're said to be. Yes. Mm -hmm. But then if you can see the work that someone has done before, and mm. then you evaluate based on that, then it makes it more credible. Yes. They can trust you more. Because okay. you know there are those experiences, in your, there's that one electrician. Everyone goes to that one electrician, but he's not that good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so if it's, it makes it easier to even vet people. Yes, yes. And uh, Sabrina, yes. you've mentioned, you've given us one example of how people can really tap into opportunities online. Yeah. You've talked about podcasts and those have been growing so much in the recent past. Could you tell us, as someone who's practicing media or someone who just wants to start, they've not even gone to school because they probably don't have the resources, mm -hmm. but they, they're interested in the field. What would, you, what, what would you advise them to do to get into the digital space and even monetize some of their platforms? Uh, what I would advise them is, uh, for first of all, for you to be in the media industry and all that, one thing you need to stay informed you always have to, you know, source for information, all that. If you want to venture into that career and uh, maybe you want to continue, uh, you need to be informed. You need to have, you know, the market maybe in, okay, in future you'd want to start your own media platforms or your own podcast, ad, as I, I had said. So for me, I'd advise them always have information, always source for information. That will always give you experiences, you'll be able to know, to have a variety of what to choose from. Yeah. Because yeah. in your media, you have to be on top of yeah. everything. You have to know what's going on, sure. who has done what, what has happened where. So you need that. That's the first step. Yes. When you have the information, then you can be able to use it to benefit you. Mm -hmm. But now what platforms? Because some in common, you information, you have content, you have skills. Where do I go to really put myself out there? Victor, where did you start from and what platforms have really given you more visibility? Okay, uh, we have, okay, depending on what you do. Because this, this nini is so broad, eh? uh, it will usually depend on what you do. If you are a designer, there are places where you go to find work for designers. If you are a writer, there are places you go to find work. Writing. For writing. So mm -hmm. it will, first of all, it will depend on what you do, the skill that you have. And then once you have that skill, eh, you can even, it's, it's so easy, you can just Google online where you can find these jobs. And maybe, depending, because there are very many, so you'll vet maybe the best you can do, the, easier, the easiest to start. Because if you choose the, <laughs> the top tier one, <laughs> it will be very hard for you yeah. if you're a beginner. You see, so you, you, you take the easiest to start. And then once you start, it's very easy to grow because mm -hmm. the problem is usually starting. Eh? When you're starting, that is when you have to learn how these people want their work because mm -hmm. everyone has their rules. Yeah. Yes. If I come to your company, Y254, I'll be given guidelines. Yeah? Yeah. This is what you can do. This is what you can't do. If I go to some, somewhere else, they'll give me, even if it's the same industry. So I, it will depend with, you'll first have to learn about how they want their work done. And then from there, you can start growing, growing. And then you start with small money, of course. And then once your experience is enough, you, you can get to big money. Kwanza hapo kwa money, nadzo kuna mtu umemguzia pahali. So I want us to circle back to that as well. Because okay. people want money. People want, I've started, I mm. want 50K. Yeah. So why are you not giving me 50K? But they don't understand that your portfolio, your skills build up over time. Yeah. So we'll circle back to that and right. figure out how we can grow ourselves to be able to mm. una increase our net worth. Yeah. yeah. But Sabrina, what platforms are you mostly on when you want to consume podcasts? Or where do you frequent for your information? Because mara nyingi squeezy watu wa time to watch news. So where do you go to get information? I'll say uh, through Spotify. Uh, mm. There's variety of podcasts, variety, international, local. So according to what makes your heart happy, if you're international, of course you go for international. Yeah. But if you're local, there's always everything for everyone on the digital space. That is what I would say. So for me, Spotify, if I want to listen to podcasts, because I really love podcasts, mm -hmm. and also YouTube, uh, YouTube, I use YouTube mostly for my tutorials. If I want to cook something, YouTube or yeah. TikTok, you know, the videos are there and it makes it really easy instead of, you know, reading these recipe books and all that. Yeah. yeah. And by the way, you YouTube 
to learn. Mm -hmm. YouTube has raised so many of us. I feel like we need to be paying fees to YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. They might start you, that. You, you <laughs> see here, by the way. <laughs> Maybe that's why they decided to bring the premium option, okay. by yeah, the way. Because sure. yeah. YouTube has a wealth of information. Yeah. What I feel like whatever you need. Yeah. You can get it on YouTube <laughs> if you want to build a car from scratch. <laughs> <laughs> you will. Yeah, you will fine. get it. Yeah. So I feel like that's also important to highlight because there are some people who, as I've said, there are people who don't have resources to even pay for university, mm -hmm. take classes or do this or that to gain skills. Start from where you are. If you have access to the internet, and kunza spizia to kuna kwanga sijuna mabandulza, YouTube na nini, just go on YouTube or do a Google search and figure out how you can learn particular skills. Or, you know the times when, honestly, you may know something, but you need to confirm. Like, mm -hmm. um, yeah. let, me, let, me, let me snitch on myself. Okay. PowerPoint. <laughs> PowerPoint is my kryptonite. I can never, like, the basics, yes. But when you tell me to do functions, to do it, I forgot that back in primary school. So it's easy for you to really access information like that from platforms like YouTube. Mm -hmm. But where else can we learn? Because now, Victor, mm -hmm. let's assume you went to school four or five years ago. Yeah. And the skills keep changing and the mm -hmm. industry is advancing. Mm -hmm. How do you maintain or mm -hmm. how do you keep up with the, with the industry as it's changing and transforming? Uh, okay. Uh, depending on what you do. Like, for instance, depending on your interest and what you want to do, uh, the, 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 the e-space is good because now we have, we, have, we have personalities we can follow. If, for instance, you want to, to know how to build cars, you should make sure Elon Musk is on your list mm -hmm. because he, he's, he's on the front. He's, they, are, they, are, they are financing these engineers to do the best cars. Eh? Yeah. So you need to, to make sure that you're there on, on the, on, in case of... Uh, Depending on what you do. So there are, there are blogs, there are podcasts, there are blogs, because even podcasts teach people how to make money. Yeah. Yeah. So you can, you, you, there are podcasts, there are blogs, there are websites, like there are websites, for instance, for universities. Like right now, the same thing, you can be learning tutorials from Harvard University. Mm -hmm. It's not here, yeah. you're just finding videos online. And this was a lecture given by a and in a, I, uh, given from Harvard. Yeah. And now you're able to access the information here. So depending on your interest, eh, you can find anything you, you need. Mm. Yeah. So it's all on the internet. Yes, yes. Hakuna yes. kitu utakosa. Hakuna. Hakuna. <laughs> I like that. Because I can imagine if we told someone back in 1950 mm. that there's going to be this one site that it's not even a physical site. It's just somewhere <laughs> but you can access it from anywhere and it has all the information that probably call us sorcerers yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been so convenient that yeah. we can find all this information yeah. online yeah. now sabrina do you think it's important to follow particular personalities as he's mentioned elon musk is one he's very prominent in engineering with so many things actually in the tech space he's yeah. very very popular yeah. So do you think it's also important for us to follow people who we know are good at particular things so that we can take something from them? Uh, it is very important. Uh, there's something called online mentors. Uh, that is uh, somebody who is, uh, you know, is someone you look up to. Uh, so for me, uh, as I'm practicing, you know, media, there's that one media personality that I look up to, that I love how they do their things. I love how they organize their work and... Uh, it's good to follow people because you get more experience. Of course, you need to start from scratch. Yeah. Uh, also for them, they also have mentors. Nobody always, you know, starts from the top. Mm -hmm. They also had mentors who mentored them to get to where they are. So it is very important to have online mentors because they tell you uh, what to do and uh, you'll be able, you know, to emulate what they are doing. And I guess from there, you're able to build yourself. Yeah, we need online mentors. We need them. Yes. And I think that's also important as you've brought it up, because we've had conversations about following the right people online. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people just follow anyone, because maybe I like how this person looks, I like the lifestyle, but you need to curate a list of people who you actually aspire to be like, and someone you can learn from. Let's go back to people who do not even know how to access, or they don't want Yokujituma. Because the people who have the internet, they have smartphones, they may even have Wi-Fi connected, 
but they can't even type, how do I write a CV? How do we help people like that? How can someone like that, Ajitume, <laughs> Victor, what would you tell someone like that, considering you've been on the online space for so long, okay. and there's someone who might have internet access, but they're not really aware of the assets that are on the internet? Okay, uh, you know, now the challenge with that eh, is that it starts from inside. Eh? Yeah, some of us tunajitumanga juu ya shida. Some of us tunajituma because uh, we like what we are doing. We like we want to pursue something and it's it's really important that we do it. But now for someone who's just sitting and waiting, I think they are well off. Eh? <laughs> I, unajua this is not okay. I don't think it's it's a space for everyone. Because, like you said, from the beginning, there are people who are waiting for jobs. Yeah. And sometimes you don't blame them. You can even, it, it, it even comes from the parents, from the, the surrounding they are in. So, Utakuta, you, you are there, maybe you're even 40 years, you don't have a job, and, and everyone is okay with you. Mm. But in some other families, <laughs> <I wanna> pressure. <laughs> yeah, in some other families, you cannot even get to 18 and you're not thinking of what you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it will depend. That is, is, is more of society. But I think if you want to do something, there's always something for everyone. And no matter, atakama unataka, if you want to go online, you can go online. There are even services where you go, you're paid as a therapist. You're not a therapist. <laughs> you're paid. You, you just listen to someone. Oh, my God. It's an online meeting. You just listen to their problems and you're paid. Can you imagine yes, that? Like so actually thinking you're speaking to a therapist when the whole time it's just Cheryl chilling there and listening. To, I feel like, oh, oh my God. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's made it so easy yeah. for everyone to access any opportunity. Yes. Hey. Apoko the therapist I did not really expect that. Because you know this these days, especially with the mental health conversation that has been there, mm -hmm. the, there are so many apps and platforms that have come about where people go online and you speak to someone yeah. and you think it might be a professional. Kumbi, it's like Wikipedia. Yeah. Whole time it can do <laughs> It's just someone with info and yeah. they just share it yeah. online. Yeah. Yeah. Which, honestly, if you're not maximizing or exploiting these opportunities, then I have no idea what you're doing because it makes it so easy you can be a psychology stu student yeah. you can be training but then you're making money online actively yeah. by not even doing the most you don't have yeah. to go to an office get a space yeah. or something like that now let's get into the money because you mentioned money and honestly i know there's some people there's so many people who i've even worked with who will tell you a e, your pesa kidogo <laughs> Maki, this is someone who doesn't even have experience. Yeah. They do not have a plan B. There's no other job aside from that one. How do you get to Jituma, Ujiambie, Wacha Niende to gain experience? Sabrina, yeah. how do you Jituma to the point to Nasema, for these few years, let me just gain experience and then the money will come? Uh, for sure, if you need that money, you need to have something to give to the people. You know, you just can't... Uh, rise up and directly go there giving people things that you've not researched on, you don't have a good understanding of them. So I'd say you first have that self-will of knowing what you really want to put out there. And I'm sure when you put something good out there, something good will always market itself, yeah. even without you knowing. Mm -hmm. You know, they o It might start from a little bit, but uh, with time people, at least you get a larger audience and that is how you get you know, maybe more money in the in the process but you just don't start and money pop yeah yeah it just can't happen because people expect by the way yeah <laughs> and i'm not uh, i'm not in any way referring to even the doctor's strike because i know some of the issues with that is yeah. the money because yeah. genuinely the people who've earned that because of the training and everything they've put in but if you do not have the experience then you have to start small mm -hmm. victor when you were starting out how long did it take you to make, let's say, 25,000? 25,000. One job or cumulatively? I don't know, maybe one job. Maybe cum okay. <laughs> Sabrina uh, managed to calculate like her, yeah? Okay, uh, <laughs> Do I need to join the industry? <laughs> so, 
Yeah. Uh, okay, like she said, actually, it, it will depend on how good you are. Because, of course, you offer value for uh, the money. The people want value. Yeah. If you're good at something, people will pay for it. And again, if you're good at something, of course, there, there's issue of demand. You'll have demand. And when you have demand, you can really choose the jobs to take, the jobs not to take. Yeah. So uh, the issue of money, where I, I made 25000 I don't know. I think uh, by the time I was, I was, by the time I'm doing maybe, maybe the third month, fourth month. Yeah. yeah. Because you, ju you don't just start with making money. Yeah. You have to start and then you, you learn, there are things you learn in the job. True. Yes. You cannot be well prepared unless you're in the job. Mm. Because every day you are learning something new. Yeah. Even if you have 10 years experience, if you are up for it, you'll always learn something new. Every and sometimes day. even from your juniors, even from someone who just, who, has, who just has an idea. And that is why I think even the big companies, they try to poach new talents. Mm. Yeah, you'll find even the companies, the phone companies in Kenya going to the, to the universities, they, they do some expo there, and then they, there's hackathons, there's what. They are trying to tap new talent. Mm. Uh, be, before you come to the industry and then you sell this idea, uh, come they to us faster. And you see, I think that, that that was very important to highlight because I don't think anyone starts from the first time and they make money yeah. unless they have either support, it's not self-made, so many other factors that could influence that. Yeah. But if you're really starting by yourself from scratch, as you've said, you have to learn and grow slowly. Yeah. So, Sabrina, yes. what one attack our social media influencer Utaineze content na pesa ni pate brand deal kesho. Mm -hmm. What do you tell people like that? How can they pace themselves? Especially, let's say, media personalities who are really, they've looked for jobs in traditional media houses, hazipatikani. So they opted to create content and put it online, see what they can find. What would you tell them about the patience of building up slowly before they get to a place where portfolio in a ongelelea? I'll say one. Uh, for you to, you know, get to that outer space and people recognize you, it's good first to, once you do your own research, it's good to always bring content that is not familiar with everyone else. That is one thing that can make you at least, you know, propel you. And uh, another thing, you need to have that understanding of, okay, this is, thing, this is what I'm going to bring out to the people. Uh, is this something that has ever existed? And if it is existing, I can maybe diverge a little bit. You know, people love, you know, new things. Yeah. You know, they, you know, we are used to this. At least give us a different version of whatever we are used to. Yeah. So I guess being unique in the content, I mean, in the di digital space is very important. Just have a unique content. Don't do what everyone else is doing because everyone else is becoming a YouTuber. You just wake up and you just feel like, okay, hi guys, I need to show you my lifestyle. Uh, you know, today we are going to this place. This is my house tour. At least give us a different content. We are used yeah. to that. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's also important because everyone wants to do the same thing and pop out yeah. Yeah. and be like, yeah, we're doing lifestyle. We're going to this <laughs> restaurant today. But there are 10,000 other people doing yeah. the same. And as much as there's still space in the industry, you need to have a new perspective. If you're going to the restaurant, then what are you doing? Like you see the way, I, <laughs> I think, okay, I don't know if I should, I should mention it, but there's this lady who really eats. Boina. You know? Oh my. <laughs> and, she, and you know, mukbangs have been there since 20 Suju Awards. But she came in with a new perspective. The people were like, hiya, okay, we need to watch her. So if you have nothing more to offer, then maybe you should reevaluate your plan and figure out what should I do. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about the challenges. Because to Mongeleapa, like the online space is so, it's so vast. It has so many opportunities. But there's some challenges that come with the digital space as well. Victor, could you share some of the challenges you've encountered through your journey? Uh, okay, uh, so... Okay, uh, so when, when you're starting, first of all, eh, it's not easy to just start and then you get the, the, the fame you need, maybe the, the, the clients you need, the niche you're looking for. It's, it's, not, it's not that obvious. So when you're starting, it's when it's hard because, you, you, first of all, there are things you learn there. So the more you're doing, the more you're getting better, the more you know how to interact with these clients because you, you realize this is a business. 
So in business, you'll have times where if the client is not pleased by what you did, so how do you handle it? Uh, you find that uh, maybe you, the timeline, eh? uh, they, they needed the job at this time, and then well, well, on my petition time, how do you handle it? How do you make sure this client doesn't go away? They always come back. Yeah. So there are things you learn, and it's, uh, the challenges always come up. There are new challenges every day. But I think when you have an open mind and you're willing to learn, you can always overcome them. You can always grow from them. You can always know how to do things better and easier. Because even with time, you learn a job that could take you maybe two hours. If you have experience, it will take you 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then it's perfect, you see. Yeah. Yeah. So as you've said, every day is just a learning lesson. Yeah. Because, eh, na jumtu na zasimu, kutu wapu unatengeneza pesa. How are you behind the scenes? <laughs> Ujalala the whole night, <laughs> trying to figure out one small detail. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sabrina, what yes. would you say you think are some of the challenges that e-commerce is facing? I would say, especially for these people that do uh, their work online, I feel there are people who still up to date. They don't trust online you know, shopping. Yeah. Like for me, as, as much as I said I do online shopping, there are things I can't buy online, especially electronics. Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> you know, you can True. just see an iPhone out there and then <laughs> so yeah. I don't think um, one challenge is I think they need to, you know, make people uh, fully, you know, trust in what they are doing. So I feel one of the challenges in that uh, space is uh, there's no trust. Mm -hmm. As much as y you, you feel like it's so good, you know, to shop at the comfort of your house, you still have bats. Nani na, you know. So that is something that with time, uh, yeah. I hope it will come to an end because also for me, it's also affecting me. There are things I can't buy online as a yeah. seed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you know, it's actually funny that she's mentioned that. Because right before the show, I was telling a colleague of mine that now that I've seen the hair, I can buy from that shop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but mm -hmm. without the referral, yes. there's no way. And you know, so many people have, especially I've had so many stories of people who buy from even clothing brands. And when I let you work it too, it's so different. You've ever seen <laughs> what you saw versus <laughs> what you got? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you're wondering, he's in him, him, him. But then, you know, I also notice sometimes people don't read the description. Yeah. With electronics yeah. or Siju, a furniture or something, women are up with 30 centimeters. Woman, a picture ni kuboko like, eh, ini meza, itakuwa kwa nyumba. Kitu na kuja, it's tiny and you're wondering what's up. So yeah. it's so tricky because it needs experience as well. Mm. I feel like as a shopper, for products particularly, mm. you need a lot of experience to be able to see the, the reviews, uangalia details, wane kila kitu doko like, okay, maybe we can get this. Because I think for services, it's a bit different. With your portfolio, then people can just trust it. Uh, not really. Sometimes that are kuna watu scams, eh? Yeah. Uh, like for your experience, easy mnasema, you can buy a table and maybe it was a toy. Yeah. But <laughs> the online platform, especially if you buy from, okay, there are people you cannot. There, there is a website called wish.com. Mm -hmm. There are other, so people will put something that is so good looking. You might think you're buying a car. Only that uh, the price now, it doesn't match the price of a car. But sasa <laughs> sele kame kuja kaku kwa meza. Mm. You see, you bought a car, yes, but you cannot get hey, your car. Ina make sense your bay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, so I think that is another challenge. Even in the service industry, mm -hmm. you might find uh, people advertising what they can't offer. Sometimes I would advertise, someone would adv advertise a service. Only for them, they are not the ones doing the service. They have someone else to do the service. And when they can't find this person that is good in it, they are paid. So they yeah. have to deliver. So they end up finding someone that can do the job. Mm. You know. So even in the service industry, you'll find there are people who are not reliable uh, with what they are, they are selling. Yeah. Mm. And that's why so it cuts reviews are, are in me. Yeah. They are important. They are very important. Okay, by the way, imagine to enangate so many reviews. Because, mm -hmm. you know, people can even steal your work. Yes, yes. And they portray, do, yeah. yeah. Uh, and they say, I've done this, I've yeah, done that. Yeah. Whole time, when I'm a page of Victor. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's so scary when you think about it. Yeah. You know, let me, as we're winding up the conversation, let me talk about these people who do not even have products. Because I'm aware there are people who, maybe they're selling shoes. 
So they get them from a vendor and or to me a picture, they post when they get a buyer, that's when they get the product. So do you think that can help? Sabrina, do you think maybe someone who's starting out, they don't have any income, they don't want to invest any resources, do you think that's a very good option to start with? Yes, it is a good option to start with because uh, if someone is giving you their product, you sell it. In the, uh, in the process, you might also end up getting your own skills and also maybe earning the little that maybe they're giving you for doing that work for them. You might, you know, combine all that effort and just start your own. Uh, so it's a good option because uh, the experience, experience is very important in the digital space, very important. Yeah. So I guess if you just do that little, little, you just gather all that money, I guess they can start their own, just a small shop and they go expanding. They start from somewhere. Because yeah. I've seen a gentleman who used to be on TikTok selling bags. He'd get them from Gikomba and now he opened a shop, I believe last month or the month before. And that was from nowhere. So many people are opting for that these days. Yeah, hey Kwanza, when you think about the expenses of yeah. buying products, yeah. VAT, Nini, Hujalipa rent, steamer, eh? It's a good option to go that way. Yeah. So as we're winding up the conversation, because Leo, time in Atricia, and we have to wind up earlier. Yeah. Victor, could you let us know, first of all, how you, because you're an interior, graphic, and web designer. Yeah. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> that is a lot, but yeah. I like that. Okay. How would you advise someone who's also maybe getting into something similar or they're interested in maybe graphic and web design mm -hmm. or even interior design? What would you advise them to do? What platforms can they access? And how can they progress with their career, especially online? Uh, especially online. So, uh, first of all, if they are getting in the, in the industry, first of all, they need to be passionate. Because uh, design, you know, design is what you see. You either like it or you hate it. So you should be passionate enough. Sorry, yeah. Uh, you should be passionate enough so that uh, whatever you, 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 you'll give out there, people will receive. And then if it's, uh, if it's in the online space, uh, you need to have a lot of information, a lot of information with the trends, because these are things that changes every day. Mm. Even with the, with the, with the smartphones, they are they're, they're doing a new phone every time, but most of what changes is actually the design. Yeah. Yeah, so performance will boost, yes, yes, but mostly it's just the design. They come up with a new design, even if they stick to the same performance, everyone will buy because it's something new. So you need to be passionate, you need to, to research, you need to know what is trendy, you need to know uh, what you can do that people can receive. Mm. Yeah, and then from there now for the platforms, for the platforms, of course, there are people you follow, there are companies you follow, there are pages you follow. Just just look for what you need because every designer is different. Uh, look for what you need. Yeah. Yes. I like that. Here, need to jitume too. Because we can't lalia these skills. Yeah. yeah. I like that. I hope you've taken that from home. So, Sabrina, yes. could you also tell us what you'd advise someone to do about exploiting the opportunities online? So, as Victor has said, uh, it's good to have a passion about a certain thing. So, if this is what you like, uh, it's good. Give it a trial. And you never know. You never know who is watching you. You never know who is, you know, just viewing your page and whoever will like your page and, you know, they can recommend you to other people. Also, it's not all about passion. There are people who begin things online and they're not passionate. They were not passionate about whatever they were doing in the start. But in the, in the process, you gain the passion as people are able, you know, to interact with your content or whatever you're doing online. That's very true, because yeah. it has to start from you, yourself. You have to have the passion, the drive, and then people will recognize. Mm -hmm. And I like what you've both said, because Niwewe, by the way, it starts from you. Because once you start focusing on who is giving me feedback, who is watching, who is doing this and that, then it's a lot of noise mm -hmm. that can really make you miss out on the whole point. Yeah. So um, I don't know if we have any comments. Uh, Timo, if you can share that, perhaps I can read them as we're winding up. But my biggest takeaway from this conversation, which I would even advise you to do, if you have a smartphone, if you have access to the internet, you can get 
any and everything that you need, whatever question you have, whatever information that you want to seek out, it's very possible to get it online. If you're at home, you have some skills and you don't know where to start, you've been looking for jobs and you're wondering, Nitatoa Pikazi, start using your phone figure out the platforms that you can utilize and then you start from there because i believe all of us can really harness the digital platforms i like to think if you're spending three hours on instagram then it's very easy to convert two hours of that into something that you're making money from yeah. whatever platform it is facebook x TikTok, all these platforms these days make it possible to monetize so i'd re encourage you to really do that and um, I hope you've enjoyed this conversation. It's been very brief today because we have football airing right after this. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sorry I've been unable to sample your comments, but we will do that next week. A repeat of this will air tomorrow between 1 and 2 p.m. And we will be here next week, same time, same place. Thank you so much for sticking to Y254 TV. This has been the Power Talk Show, and my name is Cheryl Blessing.